cloudy world and complex's best list of funny people got me mad bro so cloudy world and complex just recently dropped the list of their 20 funniest people on the internet and the internet kind of mad about it and let's talk about it so at the first for number 20 they have caleb presley now caleb presley whether you like it or not i definitely do think he deserves to be on this list i've seen some of the most viral clips or whether they were ha ha funny or laugh out funny they were still pretty entertaining this year or i'll say 2013 to this year because i feel like this list is kind of looking at late 2013 to now because some of the people on here i feel like they're a little bit higher because of that late 2013 run they kind of started their funniest list but for having number 20 being caleb presley i'm not mad at it now number 10, 19 is gillian wallow and i kind of agree with this spot a lot also and that's mainly because i'll say the first 15 spots i more or less agree with and that's also because they're more of a old head group that has established a lot and they're kind of in that era where I, I look at them kind of on that joe budden wave where they're very popular and respected but their humor is more so an added on thing to the game and like the positive stuff they bring onto their podcast so i agree with this spot as well now number 18 is new york nay i have never heard of this woman but I want to also give her respect because I'm sure that there is a large following of women that do think she's funny. I see she has nearly almost 3 million, almost 4 actually. So clearly she has a large following that respects and views her. But there's something that I always notice where there's this divide in male and female comedians where there's a lot of female comedians that aren't even kind of in consistent male spaces just in like their terms of what their comedy is and i also feel like that's maybe because a lot of the male comedians of the new era do a lot of collab slash interact in the same space so i still want to give her respect to what she did and number 17 being vince staples is robbery vince staples is hilarious bro vince staples is so funny and it's not even funny it's it's not even a joke bro because half the time he's not even trying to tell a joke bro it'll be funny but it ain't no lie bro like this man is a genuine beast i believe his music is still some of the toughest out here and i feel like this spot is kind of crazy considering some of the funny moments he's brought like this man has got an entire netflix show bro come on now like there's levels to this like like let's really talk about like there's levels to this it's the same when they try to compare cat williams to some of these dudes like cat williams has done literal traveled the world done huge sellout comedian shows on his name only multiple times he puts other people on his stuff some of these dudes in the top five would be starters and headliners for his shows so i'm looking at them like these are these are people in their own lane that are establishing things off their namehood alone videos products like big deals that other dudes can't even dream of and i don't think that i feel like this man staples is top 10 category and i think that that's an issue that i personally have just off of that name alone now when we go on to number 16 cameron and mace i don't know how to agree with this and i feel like this is kind of a place where you can look at someone like tony or like uh yeah the tony dude on tiktok i feel like could have this spot because it's respect to cameron and mace it's respect to new york rappers who have established their legacies who have genuinely had a hand on creating modern rap we got to give cameron and mace their respect their era in the 2000s for new york was nearly untouchable especially when you consider that they both came up in an era of the jay-z's and the Nas's, where most other rappers wouldn't even kind of get a nod or kind of a a minute of shine during their level of dominance for their type of era so i want to give them respect not only on their comedian level but also respect for where they're have they're holding the culture because having a certain amount of influence in the culture i think should also move you up in this rank because some people's humor also hits harder because of their personal lived experiences that they've been through and i think that i want to give respect to that man cameron and mason here i just don't know if they're considered top 20 in this type of level but i can respect if somebody disagrees heavily with that that's just my opinion on that number 15 is lou ratchet and lou ratchet i feel like he should be a little bit lower on this list and i'm gonna tell you why because lou ratchet is literally riding heavy on three skits and i want to really talk about that because this man has three classic classic like heavy classic like i think these skits are going to be played for the next few years consistently classic everyone knows that one skit that really shines high with this drake and kendrick stuff everyone knows that skit he has a few right just like even that skit with the weapon was hilarious hilarious he has some genuinely laugh out loud skits it's just the fact that he's a carmelo anthony in a room full of lebrons 
amazing talent amazing level of skill but the level of shooting consistency keyword consistency per skit slash level of stuff even for some of the higher people or lower people on the list out of 20 like 17 18 19 20 i feel like his consistency just can't hit this type of level or just because i feel like if we're giving people love and like name on this list off of one skit that's kind of disrespectful and there's people on here that have had 10 to 30 to 40 to even 50 viral skits just to have their name have the respect it does now like in my opinion in my opinion but i do want to still say respect to what he's done he has three or four very classic hilarious skits and i want to give him that number 14 being kai sinat dummy viral dummy dummy viral level of disrespect and I can understand that people don't see him as being that type of funny, but I look at him in the same lane as a Kevin Hart funny where his dominance is having a different level of, con of consistency where you might not understand his funny or get it until you're looking back at clips or you're looking back at some of their funny like levels of what they're doing or even looking at kind of the way comedy is kind of going because their level of dominance shapes comedy more than it does is just basic comedy. Even when I look at Kevin Hart, help me, but I look at him, uh, I look at some of these um oh you, you gonna learn today like this type of stuff that's that's when i think of, i look at kai level stuff like that i can list five six seven things off kai's name that are just viral stuff whether it's the Nicki minaj get the kevin hart uh stream the offset streams even the stuff he's done with cardi b like i, I even just calling this man lebron lebron saying the n-word but then it not even showing his face in every way it, that was hilarious bro like this man kai is top five and i'm not joking Joking. and I wouldn't even be mad if people felt like he was top three like this man had the most streams of any streamer of people live he had 700,000 people plus in a live stream watching his Kevin Hart stream to put that in perspective the biggest stadium the whole people has 150,000 and it'll look like it's a literal like a state of people and this man Kai had four times that like let's put some respect and value off that man Kai's name and I don't I don't think that number 14 is fair at all I, I don't think that's cool now number 13 is Phantom and I kind of agree with this and honestly I wouldn't even be mad if they kept Phantom being a uh, one step over Kai in whatever ranking because I do enjoy and appreciate what Kai's content is and you guys gotta understand that when you're the heavy hitter of your group you sometimes have to sacrifice personal type of enjoyment or entertainment for having a certain level of it. Same with Kevin Hart, where he mentioned how sometimes you can't be as funny or personable as you want to because you're at a certain level where you have to appeal to a larger variety of people. Phantom, I feel like has that certain level, but he also has a little bit more of a in, in, like integrated, more intimate connection at times with his viewers. And you can see that with the jokes he does. I don't disagree with this at all. I enjoy Phantom's content, and I'm glad that two people on here made it on AMP. I get why they didn't put another member of AMP, even though I can understand why Duke could be mentioned. But Duke is bigger than just funny, and I don't think that him on this list would have made this the most sense. But I can understand him, and I want to give an honorable mention to Duke. Shout out to my boy Duke. Shout out to AMP as a whole. Now, number 12 being Zoe Spencer. Uh, I've actually seen her before and I don't disagree with this spot either. I think Zoe Spencer is a really good part of this list and I don't think that she's in a bad spot at all. Going after this is Lou Young. I don't really know too much about Lou Young. I get I might get a bunch of Lou Young haters. I don't think he deserves number 11 spot. I feel like if the urban black audience and I'm in that urban black audience, if the average urban black audience hasn't at least heard of your name. I don't know if your name should even be on this top 20 list. I get that might be very controversial. I'm not saying it has to be, but I'm saying that a lot of these people are of an urban culture space and to not even know any of these people kind of show would show to me the mindset of someone who wouldn't even be the demographic for this list. So I feel like maybe I'm off on this, but I just don't know who this dude is like that. Someone can put me on, show me some love. Number 10 being 85 South. They're pretty funny, bro. I enjoy their comedy, too. I look at them in a little bit of an older, but still, still a young generation thing. Like, they're like that mid to late 20s type of demographic where I feel like they really shine at that. I don't think there's a lot of creators that kind of put into that niche as much. So, I mean, I'm really happy with that, you know. Uh, someone further after this is 
Malik B. Malik B is very funny. Very, very funny, bro. I like his comedy as well. I feel like I don't think that we appreciate enough stand up sometimes on these type of lists. So I'm glad. I'm glad they showed him some love. I'm very glad they showed him some love. Number eight, Desi Banks. Hard disagree. Now, I love Desi. I grew up on Desi skits heavy. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. But I don't think he has the same amount of cultural influence he even had in arguably 2022 and 2023. I feel like he's still a large, you know, a bigger person. And you could probably say number wise, he's exponentially grown from that time. But I'm talking about impact on the culture, the way people still look at his skits, the way and the reactions people still have with his skits. I feel like he's starting to get a bit one dimensional and I feel like he should have been on the list, but I think he should have had a lower number, maybe around 12 or 13. I still want to show love to Desi Banks. I just feel like some of his stances on stuff, especially with some of his comedy lately, it maybe just doesn't hit as hard as some of his older stuff, but still love and respect to that man, Desi Banks. He's established a lot. Number seven, Curvo Dolo. Hard agree, hard agree, hard agree, man. Curvo Dolo is an extremely talented, young comedian outside of South Florida. And I love that he's consistently able himself to stay relevant. A lot of people that go viral don't know how to stay relevant. And I personally remember Curvo Dolo, really dope dude. He's elevated himself beyond a lot of things. And we have a personal interview coming out soon. So this is great that he got listed on here and i think that his spot is very well deserved and very well respected now when we go on number six funny marco heavy agree he's having an extremely dominant year right now my funny marco of course i think that he's also benefited off of the bobby althoff stuff and the issues with that as well but that's life you know you can't say that a catalyst is the is shouldn't make you appreciate their comedy still i think funny marco's having an amazing year and he's really putting on for everybody Number five being Theo Vaughn, another heavy agree. Theo Vaughn is unbelievably funny, man. I think Theo Vaughn actually got a good spot. I don't know if it should have been this low, but I still respect the Theo Vaughn love, and Theo Vaughn is one of those guys. Now, number four is Trey Rags, and I feel like he's a little bit controversial because I also agree probably the most on this list with his spot because Trey Rags, I think, is... The biggest push of the new internet level of comedy and how the internet kind of of our era likes comedy i feel like out of all the people on this list his comedy is the most i'd say the new push of the TikTok comedian era type of comedy i don't see that as a bad thing at all i feel like he's very much a blade runner he's very much a someone who's pushing that era of comedy in a great direction because most dudes be corny i feel like trey rags and, and that dude tony are the heavy too funniest that i see consistently who make that type of tiktok comedy and i feel like i want to respect kind of respect heavily what he did with that because to even have your name to be even known around these people and even have it right here it might ruffle some feathers but people who know comedy are very glad trey rags got this spot and are very appreciative of that spot now number three is mark phillips and rdc world now oh we i know people mad about the way they coming at this and the way they saying it but if we're being honest, true RDC World fans, we don't like what they're saying, but you understand. If you knew RDC World's first few years, bro, this man, Mark, was kind of unfairly carrying them on his back. Mark and Desmond were genuinely unfairly carrying these boys on their back, boy. I'm not saying other people were not funny, not about funny level, but I'm talking about how consistently I would see them in skits. I wouldn't even see Leland as consistent as I would Mark and Desmond. And even, you know, the uh, Mark's other cousin, both the braces. I, I can't think of his name right now, but I, I, I love his comedy, too. Those three, Mark, Desmond, and the, I'm sorry for not thinking about your name right now, bro. It's apologies, but the other dark skin brother with the braces those three to me are the strongest heavy hitters of early 2019 comedy and i don't apologize i don't care if they're the same group i don't care what nobody thinks those three members of rdc world put rdc on their back for years and i'll say it to their face because that's how hard they were pushing rdc and it's love to everyone else in the group it's love to leland it's love to you know even though you know um, one of the homies with locks that was um one of their strong editors and helpers with their creative direction they all put in heavy work as well but i'm talking about in terms of what i saw the grind on you got to give mark and those boys their credit and even though i don't like how they said it i think that i at least do deserve that mark needs to hear about his individual presence saving rdc mark needs to understand that his individual presence brought millions to rdc 
not, maybe not even half as half the amount of people they have maybe not even 20 percent of all the people they have but i personally first came to rdc because of mark's presence and charisma and i know a lot of people that did too and i think that he also deserved to be highlighted whether people like that or not and i think that mark deserves this whether he feels it or not mark is a goat bro what you've done and what you've established you are your kai sinet your a p of kai sinet you are you you're the mark philip of rdc you came first like you are a genuine trendsetter bro and i wanted i really want mark to understand and value that man if y'all ever get a chance send this to mark bro i want him to really understand how impactful he is and what he deserves for that so good on mark Number two is Ben the Don. Now, Ben the Don is a real cool dude. I actually met him a few times. We did a beach video on uh, South Beach, Miami with uh, his um, agents and people there. It was really cool. My boy uh, Rain, Untamed Rain, and my boy Shamar were there. Really good active video. Uh, ben the Don is a genuine dude. Really cool vibes. And I'm just been really happy with his comedy. His, his you know, cameo in that uh, Drake video is insane. He deserves this year. It's been amazing, and he's been taking over. And of course, if that man been to Don here, you know number one had to be Big Drewski, man. And I agree. Drewski, 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 man. Whether it's been from Nike commercials, AT&T commercials, man. Super Bowl commercials, man. Like the beam. This dude has been everywhere, bro. And I, I got to respect. I feel like this list is heavy late 2013 to 2014 dominance. But I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad.